Estás viendo Canal América, Televisión Dominicana para el Mundo. A Time for True Show is sponsored by the office of Dr. Bernard Fiokoff, a periodontal, dental implant and laser specialist in New York City, for over 40 years. Dr. Fiokoff was honored by the International College of Dentists and Pierre Fauchard and received the Presidential Lifetime Humanitarian Honor from the White House. Call us at 718-229-3838. Sometimes life can be so damn hard You don't know where to go Everything is falling apart yeah. You try to do your best But only God knows That you've given everything you've got But the world takes you down You just keep moving on at your feet. Welcome to A Time for True Show. I'm your host, Dr. Bernard Fialkoff, and we welcome back with us again today. And tonight, we're going to deal with what is going on in our world. Why does it seem... The things just don't go in the right direction. Although many things are changing, very interesting, and uh, some very positive things. Well, we're starting to see the importance of human beings, of our emotions, and something very interesting that came out, which actually the Surgeon General put out an advisory on what he called the epidemic of loneliness and isolation. And in that advisory, the Surgeon General of the country, laid out a framework for a national strategy which advances social connection, our interactions as human beings, and recommends that as individuals, as the government, in workplaces, in health systems, in community organizations, that we can take charge and increase our social interaction, our care and affinity for each other in our lives, in our communities, across the whole country. And he said to improve physical health. And he said that our epidemic of loneliness and isolation has been an underappreciated public health crisis that has harmed individuals and societal health. This is from the Surgeon General, Dr. Vivak Murthy. It's very interesting because too long it seems to be that humanity and uh, love, care, and really doing things that worked has been disappearing in our world. And it seems like it has disappeared uh, even years ago. So tonight we have a very special show because with the Surgeon General's message in mind, Obviously, we want to increase things that care for people, things that unite us, things that bring us together. But, unfortunately, there are segments and philosophies out in our world that seem to be the antithesis. And so tonight, we're very lucky to have with us Anne Godicki, who is the executive director of the Citizens Commission on Human Rights at the National Affairs Office in Washington, D.C. And the Citizens Commission on Human Rights is an international mental health watchdog dedicated to eradicating abuse and human rights violations in the mental health system. For over 20 years, Anne has raised public awareness of patients' rights and the abuse of patients in the United States mental health system. She has worked to free people who are being unlawfully held against their will in psychiatric facilities and investigated other complaints of patient abuse in psychiatric facilities. 
bringing it to the attention of the proper authorities, and getting needed reforms put in place. She has testified in legislative hearings, public forums, on the harms of psychiatric practices and the need for reform of the mental health system. She speaks with African-American leaders from all over the U.S. at the annual Congressional Black Caucus Foundation Legislative Conference, where the Citizens Commission on Human Rights traveling exhibit is also displayed. And so engineer, if you will, if we bring her up live, I'd like to bid a warm, a time for truth welcome to Anne Godeke, Executive Director of CCHR National Affairs Office, DC. Welcome, Anne. Thank you, Dr. Fialkoff. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. Well, you know what? I give you a lot of recognition, a lot of acknowledgement. You have a tough job, and I wanted to ask you, because it's probably a job a lot of people would shy away from, even though it's so important. How did you decide to enter into this human rights work? Well, in my own family, it started with uh, two of my sister's sons in elementary school were uh, advised to be on ADHD drugs. And having uh, started my career as a teacher, I knew that they were restless in class because they were not being properly challenged. So I, I got my sisters to get them tested. They got the educational support that they needed and the behavioral problems disappeared and they did not go on ADHD drugs. And then uh, friends and family, uh, there were instances where people were picked up by the police, taken to the emergency room, pending transfer to a psychiatric facility where I could go in and intervene and just became aware that something's very wrong when people who are having <coughs> trouble that should be handled in some other uh, sensible way are instead being considered uh, to have a mental health issue and, and channeled towards mental health drugs, psychiatric drugs. Very, very, very disconcerting. And, you know, sometimes most of us who are such good people don't even realize that it's going on uh, in our areas. And so this is so, what's so important. You're, you're coming on the show tonight. Uh, I wanted to ask you, because you're an expert in your field, is if you could tell us a little bit about your concerns on some troubling aspects of our current U.S. mental health system. Yeah. Tonight I wanted to talk a little bit uh, about the, the um, systemic racism that is present in today's mental health system. And the reason that everyone can be certain that that exists, that that systemic racism exists is because the American Psychiatric Association and the American Psychological Association have both admitted to systemic racism in their practices. And just uh, for clarification, psychiatrists are the medical doctors who are able to prescribe psychiatric drugs. Psychologists are called doctor because they have a PhD in psychology. And these two organizations are the largest membership organizations of psychiatrists and psychologists and uh, if I may, I'll tell you some of what they have admitted to in 2021. So sure, shortly you're not after- say, Anne, let, 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 Let's do one thing, because I know you have a PowerPoint. Yeah. Let's put it up on the screen, because I think that you, know, you have a lot here that the public needs to know about. So engineer, let's put up her PowerPoint. So while Executive Director Godeke is speaking, she can reference and the viewers can see, here we go. And here's the logo of 
the Citizens Commission on Human Rights. And if we go to the next slide, engineer, and then I'll let Ann take control. Okay, Ann, go ahead. So you go ahead and you let us know when you want to move the slides. Okay, thank you. The American Psychiatric Association made this public apology in 2021, which was just a few months after the George Floyd incident. And here's what they said in part, these appalling past actions, as well as their harmful effects are ingrained in the structure of psychiatric practice and continue to harm psychological well-being even today. Then uh, that was the psychiatrist membership organization. Then the psychologist membership organization, the now, American- This is amazing, I'm sorry, just to say something. Yeah. And this is yeah. actually what you just read. Very interesting, I was looking at this. This is actually an apology uh, in 2000, looks like 23, from the American- 2021. 2021 from the American Psychiatric Association. I mean, wow, that's very interesting. So go ahead, I'm sorry to, let's continue. Go to the next slide, engineer. Yeah, this is what the American Psychological Association said, the psychologists. This apology acknowledges the role of psychology in promoting, perpetuating, and failing to challenge racism and the harms that have been inflicted on communities of color as a result. Wow. So there's no doubt that there is not only systemic racism, but behind that there's a history that, that brought that into, uh, into all the way up into the present day. And I, I'll go over a little bit of that history just so you can see how down through the decades this uh, racism has built up, again, promoted and perpetuated by psychiatrists and psychologists. Their role is, uh, is little known, but um, we, can, wow. we can go over a little of that history okay. uh, tonight. So engineer, let's get to the next slide. Yep. Let's go to 1792. Dr. Benjamin Rush, considered the father of American psychiatry, himself a slave owner, invented a disease he called negritude or negritude that he claimed turned skin black. He said blacks needed to be segregated to prevent them from infecting others. So he created the first fake science basis for racism and segregation. And this is known as scientific racism, a, a pretended scientific reason for racism and segregation. And he wow. was considered, he is considered the, Amer uh, the father of American psychiatry. Wow, that's, that's just, you know, you really, when you look at this, you go, how, how can it be? It seems so unbelievable. And um, wow, uh, you know, it's amazing. Let's, let's go to the next slide, engineer. A little while later, a psychologist, Samuel Cartwright, who had apprenticed with Benjamin Rush, invented a racist mental illness, drapetomania which he said caused slaves to have an uncontrollable urge to escape. <laughs> now, drapetomania comes from drapedes, the Greek word drapedes, which means runaway slave, and mania, which means madness. And so what this psychologist was saying, runaway slaves have a mental illness causing them to want to do that. Amazing. In other words, if you want to be free and you don't want to be a slave, you have a mental illness. Um, unbelievable. Wow. Uh, you know, it, it, goes, it goes beyond me sometimes uh, the extent of really malevolence to do something like that because anyone who would be the effect of this, you know, because, you know, depending on who would be in control, then the other one is at the effect point. 
And it, it, this is just insane. Engineer, let's go to the next, uh, next slide. Around this same time, insane asylums were first being established in the United States. And there was a leading psychiatrist named Francis Stribling who was very influ influential. He was a founding member of the American Psychiatric Association. And he, under his influence, these asylums, as they were first set up in this country, were set up segregated, making psychiatric hospitals among America's first officially segregated institutions. Wow. You know, when you think of our Constitution, our Declaration of Independence, this goes totally against the basis of our country and the tenets of freedom and America, really, which is America's a symbol of freedom. And, you know, I didn't realize how important your talk tonight was going to be, but because, you know, this is kind of like a disease. As a doctor myself, I treat disease. So here we see a disease in, in, in the actions here, obviously, that, that needs to be looked at, evaluated, and removed. So let's go on to the next slide, Engineer. Another big part of this history that led to this systemic racism is the theory of eugenics, which was invented in the late 1800s. Psychologist Francis Galton who was a cousin of Charles Darwin, applied Darwin's survival of the fittest to humans, coming up with the idea of racial purification, which he called eugenics. And that's from the Greek word for good stock. And the idea was that some people had undesirable traits. And so those people were considered inferior and it was thought that they shouldn't have children. So uh, this uh, racial purification idea of eugenics spread globally and was res responsible for justifying many human rights abuses and atrocities, including the Nazis' extermination of inferior races during the Holocaust South Africa's apartheid, and the Ku Klux Klan's white supremacist terrorism, all eugenics being promoted, uh, as, as you'll see, by psychologists and psychiatrists in America. Right. And you know, it's interesting, because I know the Surgeon General, as he would be watching this, would go, well, this goes totally against my advisory on getting social connection and getting people to interact and improving the problems we've been having in our society. A very interesting that, you know, on the one hand, we have the Surgeon General telling us to integrate and to socialize. And here we see in this history, segregation, labeling, uh, hating, uh, very, very interesting. Let's go to the next slide, engineer. Yeah, really a separating out of some people for, for these fake scientific reasons. The, uh, for more than a hundred years, right up to the end of the last century, U.S. psychiatrists and psychologists heavily promoted eugenics. And that is uh, the ideas of black inferiority and the need for segregation. More than half of the American Psychological Association presidents between 1892 and 1947 also had leadership positions in eugenics organizations. Wow. Uh, next slide, engineer. During this time, psychologists developed and used culturally biased intelligence tests that supposedly proved that African-Americans had inferior IQs. And the reason we know this, the American Psychological Association in their apology in 2021 said, 
psychologists created and promoted the widespread application of psychological tests and instruments that have been used to disadvantage many communities of color. Amazing. You know, um, in my field, one of the first things we do in my office, and we treat all people, all different countries, origins, and um, we educate them because we have to educate them because they have the problems that they have because they haven't been educated. Uh, you know, and then we motivate them, we educate them, and then they can handle what was afflicting them or happening. But interesting that this doesn't have that philosophy. This is like somehow, like you said, eugenics, you're just automatically inferior and uh, then have testing to prove that. Uh, wow, it, it's totally, it seems like a movie at times, but this is real life. Let's go to the next slide. Due to the efforts of psychiatrists and psychologists, eugenics became deeply entrenched in American popular culture. This particular uh, poster was for a movie that ran for a number of years around the turn of the last century. And the, uh, the idea that was promoted in that movie was that race mixing was a cause of deformed babies and deformed babies should be allowed to die. Oh. Eugenics. Wow. Horrific. Next slide, please. Wow. It's, um, wow. Here's the, again, eugenics was promoted at community events, things like uh, county fairs, this is a fitter families contest. And, and uh, it was promoting white families to have, to, to be very strong, to be healthy, to eat right, to exercise and have lots of children to benefit American society. And this was, this was taught everywhere. It was highly uh, promoted textbooks, science textbooks up to the 1950s taught eugenics, teaching that blacks were inferior and that segregation was beneficial to American society. Think about it, good people out, out in uh, society in this country, we're hearing this, we're having this drummed in over and over again, the black inferiority and the need for segregation. Is it any wonder we ended up where we did? Yeah, it's very, very interesting to see how we can track now and see what, what the consequences have been over time. And um, you know, I can see why you're doing what you're doing in the Citizen Commission on Human Rights, because by uh, actually dealing with the causes, then we start getting a resolution and a movement forward and uh, where people can actually come together instead of being split apart. Very, very interesting because I don't know how many people even, I know I didn't know any of this until you're telling me now. Uh, let, let's go to the next slide, engineer. Courses on eugenics were offered by psychiatrists and psychologists at leading universities, including Harvard, Columbia, and Stanford. So think again about the American public and how if eugenics was being taught at these top universities by leading psychiatrists and psychologists, it must be true. Exactly. You know, uh, very good point. We sometimes just associate the fact that it's about a name that we recognize of a very important institution and we take it for granted that somehow this has been studied really scientifically in a standardized way uh, that it makes sense we just kind of believe it very very interesting very good point then next uh, slide psychiatrists and psychologists continued to legitimize racism 
and spread the idea of eugenics through most of the 20th century. As late as 1994, this book, The Bell Curve, which was published in 1994, by Harvard University psychologist Richard Hernstein, he was one of the co-authors, he claimed that Blacks have lower IQs due to genetic disability. He advocated selective breeding to limit the Black population. This book is one of the best known examples of scientific racism, 1994. Wow. Wow. Uh, next slide, engineer. I'm not going to go into how Blacks were used and abused in psychiatric experimentation other than to say that the National Institute of Mental Health did in fact have many brutal drug experiments using African Americans as test subjects. And the National Institute of Mental Health is the country's top psychiatric research facility. And they, uh, they were okay with that. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing how far something can go if it's not brought out to light, if it's not spoken about, if it's not, uh, you know, brought into the, the, the facts of what really are there, is there any basis and uh, so that we can really look at it uh, and how so far things can go. Yeah, you're so right, you know, that, you know, things need to be looked at. We, you know, I think one of the things that's being lost in our world of technology is integrity. We have all this technology, but where's the integrity of using the technology in a proper way? I, I think what you have here is, is so true. Let's go to the next slide, engineer. Here's a, um, a special psychiatric diagnosis was invented in the 1960s called protest psychosis to portray African-Americans in the civil rights movement as aggressive and mentally ill. So they were, they were portrayed as being psychotic. And at the same time, there were ads in psychiatric journals with pictures of uh, African-American men and Af African tribal symbols used in ads to sell anti-psychotic drugs. Wow, it's, it's, it's horrific because, uh, you know, the protests were for freedom and the protests were against abuses. And one of the rights we have in our country, in America, is the right of speech, the right to demonstrate which makes our country so great because this way things can be brought to light. Uh, the world is not just all peaches and cream every single day. <laughs> Even in families, there are upsets that occur in the best of families. Uh, so, you know, to think that, imagine in a family, uh, I guess if you had a cousin you didn't like, you'd, you'd label the cousin that he had a psychosis because he didn't get along. But, you know, uh, it, it almost humor doesn't seem correct as you're showing this. But to me, the ludicrousy of what of, of these things is so beyond belief. You know, one of the things that I've always heard that, that, that was said that Hitler felt that he would get so far because no one would believe what he was doing. They would think it was totally impossible that someone would go so far. And as I'm looking at what you're giving here, uh, it almost seems to have the same type of philosophy that, that no one would ever think that this is going on. I mean, is that true, no. Anne? Or? Yes, and, and that's a perfect segue to the next slide, which is unbelievable. This okay, is here, next slide, please. also part of the American Psychological Association apology. Is this, oh, this one gosh, I guess I, I guess I skipped one. Yeah, this is another thing that happened in the 1970s. The uh, National Institute of Mental Health, the, the top psychiatric research institution in the country, funded a violence initiative which proposed to treat young urban black 
male offenders with psychosurgery and chemical castration. Wow. It protests led by our organization, the Citizens Commission on Human Rights and others, caused government funding for these, uh, the, the psychiatric experimentation to be cut. The government funding was cut for it. Wow. Well, congratula but, but, congratulations and, you know, thank you for doing that because, you know, wow. I'm glad that the, the Citizens Commission did that for, for, for everyone really in the country, including obviously our African-American Americans. Yeah. Now the next slide, don't, don't turn to it yet. This is unbelievable, but it is part of the American Psychological Association apology in 2021. Okay, go to the next slide. From the 1960s on, psychologists gave explicit assistance to and participated in racial extremist, white nationalist, and neo-Nazi groups. Wow. It's um, be like a very bad movie. Unbelievable. So, so this, this systemic racism just came right on up through the generations to present day. And here's where things stand today okay. as a legacy, a legacy of all of this systemic race, all, the, all of this um, eugenics and scientific racism uh, down uh, through Angelina, the years. Let's, 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 let's put the next slide on for her. African Americans are disproportionately diagnosed with mental illness, especially schizophrenia, and disproportionately admitted to psychiatric facilities. Next slide. Wow. African Americans are disproportionately diagnosed with so-called mental disorders related to disruptive, defiant, and psychotic behavior. Wow, next slide. African American children in particular are disproportionately diagnosed with ADHD, conduct disorder, and oppositional defiant disorder. And in fact, four of every 10 African American children receiving mental health treatment are diagnosed with ADHD. And you know what? This is so important. And we've near the end of our program. So I wanted to ask you, um, for those leaders who are watching and say, you know, I need to do something about this. Uh, I think you said that you have an exhibit that's going to be coming to the New York area. Is that right? That's right. This week, the end of this week, we have a, a traveling exhibit that has panels that'll give a lot more information about uh, some of the, the troubling aspects of psychiatric and psychological treatment and the mental health system, uh, aspects that need reform so that people can become more aware of what is happening there because our tax dollars go to support an awful wow. lot of it through Medicaid and Medicare. Wow. So uh, do you have that, you have that last slide that Ann gave us on the facility. The, I know she was talking about that there's going to be a union square. Do you have that last slide? We should really put that up so that, you know, the viewers can see that. And uh, there's one last one that, uh, yeah, and uh, the, you know, at the end of the PowerPoint, there's a separate slide. And you said that this is going to be at Union it, Square, is that right? 37 Union Square in Manhattan uh -huh. for one week only, opening Friday, May 3rd, and running through Thursday, May 9th, from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. And you, so it's Union and Square, Manhattan. This is the traveling exhibit that you have. So for those of you watching the show then, 
uh, you know, you can come, be there. I want to make sure, Anne, that they, they get this, because to me, it's, I definitely want to go and visit for sure and understand more, and so that we can, you know, gather, discuss this, and, you know, see what can be done to, to make sure that these, these segregation, these prejudices, these atrocities don't continue. And, you know, I wish we could go on. You're, you, there's so much you're giving here. We're going to have to have you back on the show again. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Well, it's totally a pleasure, uh, you know, and Citizens Commission on Human Rights, we give you a great thumbs up. Thank you so much for what you do. And for those of you watching again, if you want to find out more about what's going on and what the show is about, Union Square, May 3rd to May 9th in Manhattan is the exhibit. And thank you very much, Anne. Thank you. For those of you out there, have a very good day. We'll see you on the next episode of A Time for Truth show. Good night. This show was sponsored by A Time for Truth Foundation Incorporated as a community service. Sometimes life can be so damn hard. You don't know where to go. Everything keeps falling apart. Yeah. You try to do your best, but only God knows that you've given everything you've got. But the world takes you down. You just keep moving on at your feet.